sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust on you. All right, so Saturday was the sixth annual MK, uh, BK Loves MJ ce celebration of the life and legacy of Michael Jackson. Given and thrown by the one and only iconic Spike Lee. Uh, curated musically by one of the most successful, one of the most appreciated, uh, one of the most celebrated, one of the most knowledgeable uh, producers, uh, music lover, director, DJ. He's known for working with everybody from De La Soul to Mary J. Blige to Stevie Wonder. He's put out a slew of projects, compilations, studio albums that have all done extremely well. He's a good friend of mine. We party for about seven hours straight. <laughs> and he coached me the whole time because I almost fell asleep in the third hour after drinking about eight nutcrackers. The one and only DJ Spinner. Yo, Spinner. What's up, Spinner? What's up, Spinner? How you doing, man? Good, man. We had a good time, huh? Woo-wee. Still paying for it. <laughs> oh, you get me too. My whole body is sore, bro. Yeah, bro. That was a, that was a long day. I woke up the next morning like, why are my shoulder blades and everything? And I forgot we were dancing the whole time. In the sun. In the hot it's sun. Hot. How many hot. people you think came out? to? Tracy showed up. Tracy I was did. in the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was thousands I, of people, right? Um, Yeah, man. I, probably 30 plus. Yeah, yeah. right? Easily. Yeah, 30,000 folks came out in Brooklyn to celebrate MJ. Man, have you done it every year? Well, we started, Spike and I started doing it uh, the year Michael passed, so 2009, mm -hmm. um, in Prospect Park. Right, I was at that first one. Yeah, that was oh, nuts. Incredible. And Snoop Dogg showed up, you know, did a little freestyle thing. Um, but we, he went on hiatus for a couple years, and then he resumed about yeah. three years ago. Wow, man, that was awesome. That was, I'm going to tell you the truth, that was actually my first one. Wow. Yeah. What'd yeah. you think? What'd you think I thought, man? I was <laughs> Millie rocking by the end of the show, man. Really? I was like dancing. I was doing, got the river that the Scarecrow guy oh, was man, playing was, Michael from the Wiz. Nuts. We were doing the <laughs> yeah. ease on down the road dance on stage. I was out of there. Yeah, well, you know, one thing about this party, man, I've been doing these parties for a long time, yeah. even when Michael was alive. You know, that's my mm -hmm. whole thing is celebrating the artists while they're alive. And um, the Michael Jackson fans go all out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, they'll come costumed up or you know thrillered up whatever mm -hmm. you know all mm -hmm. ages all ages and that's the beauty of it like these parties it brings out like three to four generations man yeah you know? yeah i noticed that speak to that too the fact that michael jackson's music um even in 2016 when i looked in the crowd it was that it's it as an artist for you um where does he rank as in terms of the biggest go-to artist when you're djing a party that you know no matter oh, man, what he's Easily top three. Top three. He's, I mean, he has joints that, once you put it on, is undeniable mm -hmm. floor fillers. Yeah. Don't stop till you get enough. Mm -hmm. I want you back, ABC. Like, these are records that are timeless. And somehow it speaks to, like, my daughters love it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. little kids. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he's been around, I mean, I have, I know a lot of people that are in their 60s, 50s that love Mike because they grew up with him. I mean, mm -hmm. he was part of our childhood. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. He he was just he just spoke, his music resonated, yeah, to the soul so across just... generations. Period. Uh, what have you been working on, man? Wow, so many. You know me, I'm a jack of all. Okay. Many different musical trades, brother. Mm -hmm. Um, most recently, um, I actually did a record with Stevie Wonder, featured on it. Finally, <laughs> done. he's done it on us right there. Okay, okay, I get it. Yeah, I get. It. I see what you're doing. It's with for it. the. It's for the. Uh, it was on the Miles Davis, Robert Glasper mm -hmm. uh, reinterpretation album called "Everything Is Beautiful." Came out on Sony mm -hmm. a few months ago. Were you in the studio with them? No, not this time. Okay, I, mean, I, I have connected with him in the studio in the past, but uh, he sent me the parts. He did harmonica on the track. The song's called "Right On, Brother." It's instrumental. Right on, brother. Yeah, being in the studio with him. Or a Mary J. Like, what are the differences between? Like, what do you learn from a Stevie Wonder that he does different? Well, with Mary J's, it was it was a remix project. Okay, yeah, I did so. a remix for As. Okay. ironically, a Stevie Wonder song with uh, George Michael uh -huh. back in like '99 or something like that. Just right but there. with Stevie, <laughs> <laughs> with Stevie, um, wow, man! I mean, that session that I he invited me out to L.A. to hang out with him about five years ago, and he was working on some music that I don't even know if it'll come out, but during that 
hour period mm-hmm. i saw the man literally on a keyboard track drums live keyboard like sent like a midi drums mm-hmm. playing it to the track live right yeah listened back to it and was like i don't really like it then got on the live kit and oh. played drums live wow. in wow. a matter of 20 minutes 20 minutes you know what I mean? Wow. So that that just lets me know that, you know, he's he's one of those self-contained, Genius. does everything, like yeah. Prince. You like know Prince. What I mean? um, when you watch, um, oh, what's the name of the documentary? Michael Jackson documentary. This uh, is it. This oh, is it. Good. Yeah, O. <laughs> Thank you, OQ. Um, pop expert OQ. Um, <laughs> Michael often said, what I like is the idiosyncrasies, the nuances about mm-hmm. an artist when I'm in the studio, um, things they say, way they move, so, the whole nine. And Michael always was would say, it's all for the love. I mean, go ahead, play that a little slower. Find the love. It's all for the love. Yeah. D- does Stevie have any of those sayings? <laughs> um, I didn't capture any of that. My guess is that uh, it's the same philosophy. You know what I mean? Because Michael learned from Stevie. Good Stevie point. is like the hierarchy of all of that mm-hmm. self-containment. You know what I mean? Like he's the guy that a lot of musicians looked up to, or still look up to to this day, to do everything. M- vocals, play several instruments, mm-hmm. track from beginning to end. Like he sees the bigger picture from, yeah. from, the, from the inception of the, the beginning of it. You yeah. know what I mean? So when you go back and listen to Music of My Mind and Inner Visions and mm-hmm. all of those colossal albums and you read the credits, you see that outside of maybe horns and, you know, guitar, He's playing everything. He's playing, yeah. yeah. Wow. And that's bugged out to think about that. Like, yeah. you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta have a rhythm track, so you gotta actually play the drums, right, mm-hmm. to the song without any instruments. Like yeah. you, you just know what's what what it's gonna end up the being. So you picture, so you yeah. track the drums from beginning to end, knowing, okay, this is where the chorus is, yeah. this is where the verse is, this is where the bridge is. Then you come back, you might do the bass line on mm-hmm. a, on a you know keyboard bass or a mm-hmm. live bass, or then you might come back and do roads fender yeah. roads on you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying like it's just a constant build but you're seeing all of that that's bananas yeah and michael in a sense was the same way he may not have been the multi-instrumentalist we know he played a little keyboard a little piano or whatever yeah. but yeah he was able to articulate musically what he heard in his head mm-hmm. to any musician you know what i mean and you had to get it you had to get it right i heard a lot of those early demos of him doing reference tracks and creating sounds with his mouth to emulate certain right instruments. down to the beatbox down to the beatbox <laughs> well dj spinner is here he's going to entertain us as we celebrate the life and legacy of michael jackson spinner give out your information listen citizens i always say this because i want to i want you to have we bring people up here to introduce them to you and so that you can maintain your own direct relationship with these folks. And I do this on purpose. I like people to give out their social media. And you can hit up Spinner yourselves and ask him whatever you want. DJSpinner.com, Twitter, DJ Spinner, Facebook, DJ Spinner, you know, all platforms. And uh, straight up, DJ S-P-I-N-N-A. S-P-I-N-N-A. Yeah, follow me on Mixcloud. Follow me on Soundcloud. Follow me on Bandcamp. I'm on all of those. You're going to enjoy this. Ladies and gentlemen, Sway in the Morning, Shade 4 5 presents the one, the only, the iconic DJ Spinner. Shade 4 5, Sway in the Morning, man. I want to thank DJ Spinner. My man, DJ Spinner, S P I N N A. We just celebrated um, the Michael, Anna, uh, Michael Jackson, the life and legacy of Michael Jackson in Brooklyn. BK Loves, MJ Party, that's Spike Lee, and DJ Spinner. Has done its sixth a- anniversary. Yep. Sixth annual? Six, sixth annual. Sixth annual. Yeah. And um, here's the thing about Spinner. And, and turn the music down for this, man, because he came up with this concept, what, 2001? Or, uh, yeah, somewhere two, around there. About yeah. 2001. He used to, he, he does what you call the wonderful parties. Whoo! Come on, Rich. Rich has been there. He's Rich been Nice is here. Is. Rich <laughs> Nice is here. Listen, Soundboy Killer. Yo, listen. The Wonderful Party, you can you can go and fall in love in the Wonderful Party. Have yeah. you? I did. Yeah, at the party. At the party. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the night, I, I snapped out of it when I walked in the street. <laughs> but while Spinner was playing them records, uh-huh. oh, I was googly-eyed. But Ooh. the Wonderful Party was primarily focused on the music, life, and legacy of Stevie Wonder. Yes. Oh. And all yes. that he's influenced. Yes. Right. Um, also, it's the Soul Slam party. Woo! And the Soul Slam party. What year did the Soul Slam start? The following year, two thousand two. And he would 
it was almost like a battle between Michael Jackson and Prince songs. Mm-hmm. Which I got a story to tell you about that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. On. So he would play these these songs up against each other and you know, you had a crowd that was Michael fans and Prince fans, and you know, it was always that thing, that competitive thing between Michael and Prince. Crazy. So you got the Stevie Wonder wonderful parties in two thousand one, the Michael and Prince Soul Slam in two thousand and two. And he's been traveling the world doing these concepts all along. But let me tell you something, people. There are a lot of imposters that have stolen this concept <laughs> and pretend like the parties that Spinner does is theirs. Or an extension of. Or an extension of. So it's a lot of, if it doesn't say DJ Spinner, you're not getting the same product. No. And authentic. No, trust me. One night I was at the Soul Slam party and shout to Puff Daddy, Pete oh, Diddy, yeah, yeah, shout yeah. to Ed Lover. <laughs> we, Cats was in the party Q-tip, battling. Q-tip. 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 Yeah, there was, it was like a dance floor of like people that you know battling, dance battling. Wow. In the, in the, in the Soul Slam, the Michael and Prince. So like when they threw on a Prince record, uh, 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 Ed Lover would start doing some Prince moves and then he threw on a Michael record and you see Puff come out and start doing i was like yo what the hell is going on but the, the, the parties that you do spend it, it's just feel good like it, it'll be a friday night or something and yeah. it's just, it's just something we would put on after a hard week and you found a way to curate music in a way that it, it's, it's beyond sound something intangible happens at these parties well my purpose in doing all of these themes um is the integrity of the music man yeah you know what i mean uh black music in mm-hmm. particular soul music because it, it speaks to everyone. Facts, and, facts. You know, the world is moving so fast, and sometimes we tend to tend to forget yeah. where things started. Yeah. You know what I mean? So my whole purpose of honoring these legends while they're still alive mm-hmm. um, is to continue on that legacy of music. You know, and have it, have it, being, have it, have it celebrated in a way that it's not over your head. Mm-hmm. It ain't about playing like, you know, of, of course I'm going to dig into crates and play like some obscure things, but people want to hear the classics. They want to sing along. The women come out, they want to dance. They want to, you know, this, 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 these parties are like church for a lot of people. And, it, and it's annual in New York. It's annual in just about every place that I do it. So people look for, they have a whole year to wait. I try to try to space it out in a way that it's not, you know, too consistent where people yeah. could get tired of it. Uh-huh. And it's a, People migrate, man. Like people plan their lives around this. I've yeah. had people come up to me and tell me, "Yo, our baby was our, we. I got married because of these parties to my wow. wife." You wow, know what I'm man, saying? That's, like that's, people have wow. conceived kids yeah. because of these parties. Because of these parties. Did, did Prince ever make it? So this is this is. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Prince didn't actually make it. Stevie has showed up many times to the parties. Yeah. Um, but Stevie, but Michael. I mean, I'm sorry, Prince. I met through uh, Rashida, DJ Rashida, mm-hmm. who was Prince's DJ. The, yeah. Uh, she introduced me to him at a party in LA and it was a funny encounter. You know, everybody uh-huh. has their f- funny prince encounter. Uh-huh. So he knew about the he knew about the theme parties, he knew about Soul Slam, and she introduced me and said, Hey, this is the guy that's been doing these versus parties and the first thing he says to me, he comes up to me before he he didn't even say hi or shit, you know, he was just like, Why does it have to be versus? Mm. And I was like, hey, it's just a party. She, you know, she told him it's just, it's a party, it's a celebration. It's not really a battle. Yeah. You know, it, that's just a branding thing. The versus thing is a branding thing. You know, people try to put it out there as a battle, but I told him that, and he, you know, he was kind of, you know, kind of just gave me this odd look. Uh huh. Stepped uh-huh. away from it, and he came back to me. So, <laughs> he came back. Well, he came back to me. Uh huh. About five minutes later, and said, you know, um, so. You know, there was an opening DJ. I was spinning this event, uh-huh. and there was an opening DJ uh, at this event, Garth Trinidad. Shout out to Garth Trinidad. Garth Trinidad, Trinidad. Yeah. Chocolate City. Yeah, this was in L.A. when this all happened. Uh-huh. So he was playing at the time. So he goes, he comes to me and he goes, uh, what are you doing later this year? It's February now. What are you doing, say, in like June? And I was like, I don't know why. You, you want to do something? He's like, yeah, I want to do something. I want to I want to do a party. Uh, you, DJ Spinner, versus Garth Trinidad. So that's his. Uh, that was his way of being yeah. cynical, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. sarcastic with me. So, you know, no offense to Garth, that's my brother, but yeah. I looked Prince dead in his face and I said, Prince, I will roast Garth Trinidad. No! Oh! Right. Oh! Sound boy killer! <laughs> what did Prince do, I, laugh? He laughed and uh-huh. walked away. Wow. <laughs> but that was just my way of letting him know, like, yo, I, you know, don't. 
I'm tested. It ain't it ain't about that. You know what I'm yes, saying? Like yes. but, but man, that's out of respect. Out, out of respect. respect. Yeah. DJ spinning, man. So listen, whenever these parties take place, you want you look for authenticity, and that comes in the form of DJ Spinner. Citizens, you can follow him once again on his social media across all platforms. DJ Spinner. S P I N N A. Thank you, bro. I Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We're getting geared up. Tomorrow night is our next episode of One Shot on BET every Tuesday at 10 p.m. And we're headed to Charlotte. And RZA from the Wu Tang Clan is going to be our celebrity judge. I need all the citizens to tweet it out tomorrow night. One Shot, Charlotte on BET. Sway in the morning. AR Room up next with Rich Nice. It's Sway in the morning. From Shade 45.